Right, okay, let's start. Um, I'm James Aiken, and this is Documentation for Fun and Profit. I am the UI team leader at the UK2 Group, and that's my Twitter and GitHub stuff. Okay, so everyone knows documentation is important. It helps you do your job, and it helps you solve problems. You can't do anything without it. But everyone hates writing it. It's hard, it's boring, and it's a specialist skill. There are full-time jobs where you just write documentation. How can you guys, as engineers, write this vital part of your system and stay safe? You've got to cheat. You can't do it. So, let's start at the beginning and define a few things. First up, what is documentation? The code comments? A wiki? Some arcane knowledge in a dusty book on a shelf. Other languages use comments structured in a special way. Quite a few of them are listed there. There are loads of competing standards, all incompatible, and they have limited flexibility. Adoption is relatively low. It's rare that you will find a project that is using the same documentation format as another one in another language. Perl's different. Perl makes a subtle yet vital distinction between comments and documentation. Documentation works on a higher level. It describes the API for your code. It's how you use it, not how it does what it does. It's for people who just want to use your code to build something else and get on with their life. Comments are low level things. They're implementation specific. They explain why you're doing something in a particular way. They're, the audience for them is for people who are going to be fixing bugs and adding new features. This is POD. <laughs> the 90s new metal band, famous for their huge hit symbol, Alive. They might share a name, but they have absolutely nothing to do with the part that I'll be talking about and will not be appearing anywhere in this talk. <laughs> This is the part we're after, plain old documentation. <coughs> it's a markup language, like HTML is a markup language. You use special tags to indicate that certain text should be formatted in a specific way, a bold, a header, a list, whatever. But pod sucks. Unlike HTML, pod is extremely limited. You can't do much with it at all. Luckily, this is on purpose. You have headers, links, bold and italic type, some lists, more space fonts, and that's it. That's all you can do with pod. This is a quote from the documentation of pod. It's quite important. The intent is simplicity of use, not power of expression. It recognises that the most important part of your documentation is the actual content, not how it's styled. Only basic markup is needed to drive your point on. What's great about pod is that it's everywhere. Almost every single distribution on the CPAN has some pod in it somewhere. Unlike in other languages, and contrary to Perl's mantra, there is only one way to do documentation in Perl. And that's a good thing. So step one to writing better documentation is to know your audience. You've got to know who you're writing for. Remember, the documentation is high level and comments are low level. If you keep that in mind, the documentation will be better. So, you've got the basics down. How can we make it even better still? Firstly, your documentation must be clear and unambiguous. It should leave no room for misinterpretation or error. It should be complete and thorough, documenting absolutely everything. No area should be left undocumented. It must be concise, direct, and to the point. No one will read something to the end if it's 300 pages long. And these are three basic questions that your documentation must answer. What you put in, what you get out, but what happens when it blows up in your face, which it inevitably will, always does. 
but there's an elephant in the room. You can do those three things, but there's one thing missing. You've got to keep the documentation up to date. Code changes all the time, and the documentation needs to keep up. But it seldom does. Out of date documentation is actively harmful. It wastes your time and causes hard to track down bugs. So, why is it so hard to keep documentation up to date? These three things. They're the three great virtues of a program. They're the source of all your power, but they're your greatest weakness. Right now, they're working against you. This one's laziness. You don't think documentation's real work. You want to write code, fix bugs, add new features. Do something more interesting. The documentation gets forgotten. This one's impatience. You might be on a tight deadline. You want to get this finished so you can go home and do whatever you want to do at home. You should probably drink beer. You know what I mean? Eat bacon. And eat bacon, yeah. Again, the documentation gets forgotten. So it's humorous. Everyone said this. Your code's perfect. It doesn't need documentation. Anyone who doesn't understand it is obviously stupid. In the end, no one understands it, and the docs get forgotten. So, what's the solution? How can we fix this? More code. Everybody loves writing code. If you're at a conference about writing code, you love it so much. So, you'll just say to yourself, I know, I'll, I'll hook something up with PPI, it'll inspect the code, it'll automatically generate the documentation, it'll be absolutely foolproof. I won't have to write a line of English documentation, it will just read from the code. And then you ask something like this. <laughs> if you have to debug or refactor your documentation, you've done something horribly wrong. <laughs> so it's not more code, it's less code that you've got to write. Remember, Pod is all about simplicity. So, now we've got to keep the documentation up to date without writing more code. That sounds like hard work. We don't like hard work. So how can you do it? You cheat, again. <laughs> documentation needs a killer feature. If you had a three minute memory, documentation would be invaluable. You'd have to keep it up to date Otherwise, you wouldn't remember what you've just wrote. My memory's pretty bad, but it's not as bad as that. But I write things down to, so I don't have to remember them. Make sure it's in your best interest to keep the documentation up to date. This is an example of our documentation viewer at UK2. The little button up there, which tests our REST API directly from the browser. It figures out what to send to our API based on our handwritten documentation. If the docs are out of date or they're wrong, it doesn't work. And everybody notices and everyone complains. This is a quote by some guy sat up there. He said, said this, we didn't know how valuable it would be. It wasn't you, it was the other one. Um, <laughs> so, we didn't realise how valuable it would be until after we did it. Everyone thought it was just some pointless stuff. But it turns out that using this tool makes developing things quicker and easier and less error prone. And as a side effect of that, our documentation is always up to date. So we tricked ourselves into keeping our documentation up to date. And that's the key. Now, not everyone has code that is testable in the same way. <coughs> So how can you trick yourself into writing your documentation if you don't have code that's testable like that? Well, like the slide says, I know a lot of people who don't want to ask for it. They just read it in line and It's a bit silly, really. But it's just a markup format like HTML. You wouldn't browse the web just viewing the source. You always view it rendered. Why would you want to do that with Pod? Some people run Perl doc on the command line. That's a rendered format, isn't it? It's not much better, really. You've got tiny monospace fonts in your terminal, limited colours. It's not scannable. 
It's a poor experience. Imagine reading a novel through less in your terminal. You wouldn't get very far, would you? If you make the docs easier to read, you'll read them more often. And if you read them more often, you'll be more likely to update. Now, making things pretty isn't a skill that like most people here have. What happens if you try and generate HTML is you end up with something like this. <laughs> High contrast, so that must be good, surely? Right, three or four? It's the point, it's not. If you had to look at that all day, your eyes would go mental. I have to look at that. That explains a lot. <laughs> So how can you get good looking documentation when you have absolutely no idea how to do it? Well, as you might have guessed, the answer is you cheat. You get someone else to do it for you. This is a module that is extracted from the documentation view I just showed you. <laughs> I, I, I am lazy. I've not put it on CPAN yet. It's on my GitHub if you want to have a look. Um, this is what it looks like. Okay. It's static HTML, generated from your documentation. It's a responsive design. It scales from your mobile up to a big screen. It's easy on the eye with no stupid colours. It's got syntax highlighting. It's got fast search and it's keyboard navigable. Just, just one of quite a few tools that are already out there. It's easy to use something like this. You can have it generate your documentation on every commit every push. You might have a continuous integration server already. Why not have a continuous documentation server? Broken documentation should be treated just as seriously as a broken build. If you've got your project on GitHub, it's open source. GitHub gives everyone uh, a web server for free. All you do is push, push up HTML to a specially named, specially named branch and you've got a website. So you should take advantage of it. Put your docs on there. You've got your code and your documentation all in one place. I'm also working on a Distiller plugin, which will do that automatically. Every time you release to the CPAN, it will update your documentation and automatically push it to your GitHub. You don't have to do any work. If you're lazy, which everyone is, that's great. So, by following step one, You've written some good stuff. Step two is learning to rely on that documentation. Tools you rely on, you want to be the best. If you rely on your documentation as a side effect, you will trick yourself into keeping it up to date because you want it to be the best. If it doesn't work, you're going to update it if you use it all the time. But what happens if you're the only person coding? You're the only person who uses it. If it's so small, all the documentation stays in your head. You don't need to write it down. Well, think about this. Documentation-driven development. It's like test-driven development, where you write tests before you write your code. Try writing the documentation before you write your code. It's like a rubber duck. You talk to it, you talk through the problems, and you, you work out the interface to your code before you've gone down a path that you can't get back out. You'll solve problems before you even knew they existed. It makes you think. And thinking is good. It's something you spend most of your day doing. So that's step three. Now, I said this talk would discuss profit somewhere. So how do you get there? Well, documentation is marketing. It may not always be true, but if something looks high quality, people tend to think that it is. If your code looks high quality, people will think that it is, even if it's not. If they think it's high quality, they're going to use it in preference to something else. This is the best marketing website for a software tool I've ever seen. This is for App. It tells you exactly what it is. It's a tool like Brett, optimised for programmers. It's perfect. It tells you everything you need to know in one page. 
The formula for this is very simple. You can use the same formula to make your code as cool as this. You've got your module name up at the top left. The abstract, the one line description which you put in your module and shows up in your CPAN search results list. The synopsis, a bit longer, goes on for about a paragraph, explains it more in depth. Installation is by CPAN miners, like every other module. Okay. The top five reasons why you should use any software project is a bit harder, but it's easily doable. All you have to do is ask yourself a question. Why did you write this module instead of something that already existed on CPAN? You'll come up with three to five reasons in no time at all. Now, that was a nice looking page. How do you get that without having to be a designer? Well, get up pages, offer some pretty sweet templates. One button. Pick a template, click a button, you've got an instant website. Put in the text from your module, you've got it updated, and you can push your documentation there as well. So now we've got a great looking website and great looking documentation. So everyone's now using your code. And that's brilliant, right? You've profited. That is what happens. So, in summary, let's just go over things again. You've got to remember that documentation is a high level concept. It covers the API how you will use the code on a day-to-day -day basis. Code comments are more lower. They describe implementation-specific things. Between major versions, your documentation may not change, but your code comments should. If you refactor your code, your code comments will change, but your documentation wouldn't, because the interface will stay the same. If you cover the basics, you answer what goes in, what comes out, and what happens when it goes wrong. If you do that clearly, thoroughly, and concisely, you've got great docs. You should dog food your documentation. Always, always, always read it in a rendered format. When all is lost, get someone else to do it.